Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you this iMac late 2006. This one in particular is the 17 inch version, however there was also a 20 and 24 inch version of the iMac at the time as well. This one inside has a Intel Core 2 Duo processor running at 2 GHz and 2 GB of DDR2 memory. However, the last time I reviewed this machine it did have 3 and I had to take one of those memory modules to put inside of a, another machine. So now it only has 2 GB and it runs fine with that, but having 3 does help out. Speaking of 3 GB, that's the maximum amount that this machine can support. If you were to put 4 GB of memory inside of this machine, it wouldn't utilize all of that, it would only use 3 gigabytes, because apparently that's the maximum that this can support. Anyway, we also have the ATI Radeon X1600 graphics with 128 megabytes of video memory, a 160 gigabyte spinning hard drive, and the super drive here on the side as well. So let's go ahead and take a look around. On the top of the machine, right above the screen, we will find our EyeSight camera. And to the left of that, we will find our built-in microphone. Working our way down the right-hand side of the machine, we will find our super drive. Taking a look at the back of the machine, we will find ventilation for the fans inside, in addition to the iMac logo. Reaching around the bottom left-hand corner of the machine, we will find our power button. Taking a look at the ports, moving from left to right, we have audio out, audio in, three USB 2.0 ports, two FireWire 400 ports, Ethernet, and mini DVI video out. Taking a look underneath the stand, we will find our power port above that, ventilation for one of the fans inside, and our Kensington lock port. On the bottom of the machine, we'll find our stereo speakers, ventilation, and the RAM access door in the center. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Here we go. Now, like I said, this machine has gotten a new screen, or actually, I don't know if I did say that. Um, the 17 inch versions of the 2006 iMacs, these polycarbonate ones, had a lot of problems with vertical lines and sections of the screen just not working anymore. And that was a problem with the screen itself. Apparently, some of them also had problems with the graphics in particular, and it wasn't the screen. But um, all of them that I have seen have had problems with just the screen. And this was actually the first iMac I ever had. I got this after I got my MacBook Pro back in 2011. And I used this machine quite a lot. And eventually the lines started to come up and problems like that happened. But I really, really enjoyed using this computer. So I really wanted to save it. Went around and found screen replacements for this were really insane, uh, insanely expensive, I should say. And um, so found a little adapter that some people made, and you could use a standard 17-inch laptop screen and put it together, and it worked. And here it is. Now, it does have a funky resolution to it. It's not the original resolution. And you could set it to the original, but it doesn't look so good. And the screen itself is actually a higher resolution than the machine was ever designed for. So once you get it too high, it, it doesn't really, you know, like it so much. Because it's hard on the graphics processor. This machine, or this screen is actually 1080p, but it was never designed to handle that. So... I don't have it set to that. I believe it's set to some weird resolution that doesn't look too terrible. But um, anyway, that's enough about that. I replace the screen, and here it is. It works fantastic to this very day. We'll go ahead and take a look at about this Mac. We can see we're running 10.75. We're going to see if I can... Uh, uh, Nope, that's not working. I thought maybe I could dim the screen a little bit to help you see it a little better, but it won't work for me right now, so I'm not going to mess with it. We can see uh, we're running Lion, which is the maximum supported operating system on this machine. We can see our 2 gigahertz 
processor, and we have two gigs of RAM currently installed. Of course, this does support up to three, and I did have three in it at the time, but I had to take out the gig stick to put in something else, I believe. So, there it has only two. So, of course, Safari is the default browser here. And it looks like whatever I was doing last was on Lighting Gallery, as that's what loaded up first here, and that works just fine. You can see we can scroll through this without a problem. Same goes for YouTube. There's not really a problem there. It'll say like, oh, you know, it's not supported, but I just click on the logo there and it'll push you right around it. And here's YouTube. Of course, you don't want to try anything that's too insanely high in the, uh, you know, area of quality, but it'll definitely play YouTube without a problem. You may see some like flickering on the screen. That's not there in real life, that's just the camera picking that up. But anyway, Safari is old, and if you would like something that's slightly a little more updated, but also out of date, you can try Firefox or Chrome. So we'll go to About Firefox here. And you can see our this is the maximum version that'll be ever supported on this machine. But uh, everything will work just fine here as well. You can go to basic websites, YouTube works just fine on Firefox and Google. Of course, once again, you don't want to do anything that's HD. Maybe it'll do 720p, but uh, yeah, standard resolutions work way better on this machine. But fantastic. It is a bit older, but it gets the job done. Here we have Office 2011. That is the maximum supported office version for this machine and we'll go ahead and let it turn on here it looks like uh, it's the first time I uh, I'm turning it on on this machine oh that's right I had to reinstall it because something was wrong with the way I installed it the first time so I had to reinstall office 2011 on this machine so here it is turning on for the first time of course if you were to turn it on when it's already been boot up once, it wouldn't have to search for all the fonts and everything. But anyway, you can definitely go ahead and type a paper. Nothing wrong there. It has all the same tabs that you would expect from a modern version of Office. So it's still supported in that area. Of course, Excel and all the other applications in Office there work just fine. All of these apps here run perfectly on this machine. I haven't uh, used some of these in a really long time and I'd never played Roblox in here, somebody else must have. Um, but Minecraft, uh, it works. You have to use an older version, though you can't use the most up-to-date one. But that's okay. Uh, older stuff is just fine and I see it's really washing stuff out here. i see if I can try to correct that a little bit. I think that's just the glossy screen and the way that the screen reacts with the camera picking it up. I could use some type of screen capture software but that just slows down the machine and I'd like to give you a the most accurate experience that I can with speed wise. So anyway all these applications except for like MacTubes doesn't work anymore. Um, but yeah, fantastic little machine. I love this thing. I used it for a long time. Even when it still had lines on it, I was still using it. Ended up buying my uh, iMac that I use today, the 2014 one, to replace this guy. Still miss this little guy. It's amazing how small it is compared to using a modern one of today, but fantastic little machine. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this little review of the 17-inch late 2006 iMac in 2017. It still does the job, and it's an amazing little machine. Once again, I really do hope you enjoyed, and also please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.